Simple database access in PLSQL. What do I mean by simple? I mean single command database changes or access, such as a single select command plus insert, update, and delete command. There is a very simple syntax change in PLSQL which changes the way the select statement actually looks syntactically as compared with SQL plus. And it's very simple. All you do, as opposed to selecting values from a table in SQL plus, all you do is select a list of values, columns, expressions, into a list of variables. Obviously, within the PLSQL block, within the scope of the block, the variables must be declared. Additionally, as we've seen before, the returning clause can actually be used to pass values or rows of values into single variables or arrays. The returning clause applies to insert, update, and delete, and only applies in PLSQL. Let's take a look at some example code. I'm going to create a very simple procedure which contains one single SQL statement. As you can see, the syntax is select count everything into a variable name from a table. Let's declare this procedure, and since it's anonymous, it's going to run all by itself without me having to use the exec command. And that's got something to do with my buffers, so we'll just clear it and start again. And it tells me it's counted 59 acts in the database. Let's verify that. Select count from act, 59 rows. That's the answer I was looking for. Now, let's go and try an example which selects multiple columns into multiple variables. So I'm going to once again copy and paste an anonymous procedure and run it in SQL plus. What this procedure did was to select acts and names into those variables from the act table and I restricted it to one row by setting the row number equal to one. I can't output multiple rows into this type of syntax structure because I need to put it into an array structure, something such as a record. The result here was that I found the first row and it says the first act stored is number one and that person's name. Now what I want to do is to make use of the returning clause just to demonstrate its use. So I'm going to add some data as it says here where dependencies exist between following SQL commands. In this case, I'm using an insert table and returning values. I'm going to use those in the show insert, namely the act ID returned by the insert statement as being the next sequence number for the act sequence is passed into the insert for the show. This is probably more efficient than reaccessing the sequence again under current value to find that current act ID value. Also, we won't actually be precisely sure that it's the same act ID because somebody else could be running a procedure such as this or simply adding to the act table. Within a procedure such as this, because of multi-user activity on the database, there would be no way to access this act ID other than to go back into this record I have just inserted and find its ID in order to pass it into this insert statement. Therefore, this is the most effective way to ensure we get the exact value. We do not do an extra select statement, an extra database activity, and we don't conflict with other users and find the wrong IDs. So. The show insertion actually returns this into show date. What I'm doing with that is I'm actually outputting it plus the act name which was returned from the insert statement. I'm outputting it using a DBMS command. So let's submit that procedure to SQL plus, pass it and compile it. And it appears that we have an error. This is why, because we added these nested table objects. At this stage, I have two options. I could simply drop these columns, or I could simply set them to null. So, let's think about what we can do. We could actually adjust the insert statement 
in the procedure. Looking at the procedure, I can see a very simple way to adjust the procedure. What we'll do is we'll simply set these two collection objects to null and we'll re-execute the procedure to add that particular record. So, paste it into SQL Plus and it tells me that it added a show on that date for that person. So we could actually select everything from the show table and the last record will be that particular show. So let's verify our data and we say we have 64 which is ACT ID 64. This is the show table we looked at, that's ACT ID 64 and we'll look at the show table where the act is in the selection of act from act where it is the act that we added. So there we have it, show ID 156, etc, etc, etc. The answer is correct, our procedure worked properly.